continuing our topic from energy conservation and uh, previously we discussed about how work and energy and power is related to each other and um, we previously uh, discussed the definitions of energy work and power types of energies uh, that it is divided into mechanical energy and electrical energy and uh, so many other things we discussed in the previous lessons uh, we mainly can uh, focus our intention on the inter energy so moving forward with this topic we're going to discuss about what is the meaning of energy conservation how that is important and how we can apply and have discussed the formulas everything so when it comes to uh, conservation of energy it states that energy cannot be created nor be destroyed it can only be converted from one form to another energy cannot be created nor be destroyed and could only be converted from from one form to another. This rule is discussed when there is no air resistance present. If there is air resistance present, then there are different rules and we'll discuss that in the later stage as well. So if a certain object has kinetic energy, so uh, this will completely be converted to gravitation potential energy or like we discussed in the previous example here, we discussed that. In this example, we discussed that how kinetic energy at the bottom converts to completely gravitational potential energy and gravitational potential energy completely converts to kinetic energy. So uh, this is what conservation of energy means that if there is no resistance present, we discuss all this on that scenarios. So energy conservation has the formula that 1 by 2, normally we do deal with kinetic energy and potential energy 1 by 2 mv square is equals to mgh. So using this formula, if energy conservation is uh, discussed and it's also discussed that there is no air resistance present, we can use this formula. The examiner could ask us to find out the velocity or height. If he asks us to find out the velocity, will mass will be divided with mass cause over the course of time over the conversion or the transfer of energy mass will remain same it will not change so rho 2 this will become multiplied with this and as it was scarce so we'll take an under root and if we ask us to find out the height of the object then we'll have v square over 2g again rearranging by this formula we'll get all this if a resistance is present then some work has to be done against friction and that is given as Ft. So keeping that in view that if A resistance is present, we have to keep this in mind that work has to be done uh, in doing against, uh, against friction or some of the energy will convert into thermal energy like in the following example. When we turn on the bulb, if we have given it in 100 joule of electrical energy, out of that, only 20 joule of energy converts to light and rest of energy will get wasted as thermal energy. So in order to find, in order to apply the law of conservation of energy, we have to add the waste energy into the output in order to find, in order to prove that energy has been conserved. It is not destroyed. It's not missed. We, we can find out and we can uh, put it in the equation. So from that, we have this formula let me write it down again for you 1 by 2 mv square is equals to mgh and these three formulas and this formula that input is equals to output plus waste energy from there we can go to the next topic which is uh, efficiency of the system when it comes to efficiency of the system efficiency is defined as useful output over input and uh, is given by the formula efficiency is equals to useful output over input into 100. So previously I have discussed that the input was 100 joule, output was 20 joule and the waste energy was 80 joule. So which we'll use here input and useful output only. We'll put it in this formula and we'll have 
20 over 100 into percentage efficiency. Basically, this is percentage efficiency. So 100 is equals to 20%. So this is only 20% efficient system. Similarly, we can apply this formula and we'll get going with the rest of the system. Again, I'm saying that the end of this lecture will inshallah discuss uh, the examples as well related to these questions in the of the very recent exam so that you could understand these topics in a uh, well-mannered way. Moving on to the next topic, which is the types of energies and uh, with that types of energy, I'm, I'm, we're not calling it types of energy, resources of energy that energy resources further divided into two parts, which is renewable energy resource and non-renewable energy resource. Renewable energy resource means an energy resource which once used can be used again and non-renewable energy resource is an energy resource which once used and cannot be used again. Uh, non-renewable, for example, nuclear fuel, nuclear energy, we can once used cannot be used again. Uh, like thermal energy once used cannot be used again. Fossil fuels once used cannot be used again. Similarly, green, here are a few examples for the renewable that once used they could be used again. Hydroelectric energy that depends on the water cycle. So we can use it again and again. Whenever it rains, we, it, it's, it's again there. Tidal energy is there. Wind energy once used could be used again. Wave energy once used could be used again. Geothermal energy, solar energy and biofuels. These are all of the energy resources. The definitions are given in the uh, theory you could see easily. In, in, in the video, you could see the definition of the following uh, energy resources that once they are used, they could be used again. Another important topic that I would like to add to this point is how each energy resource is dependent on sun. There are only a few energy resources which are independent of sun, does not draw its energy from sun or does not depend on sun. So let's discuss that. That's a smaller topic. Out of that is geothermal energy. It does not draw its energy from uh, the sun. And then we have... Uh, uh, here we have tidal energy that does not draw its energy from the uh, sun and here is the nuclear energy. These are the three types of energy which does not draw its energy from the nucleus, uh, from the sun and uh, tidal energy depends on the gravitational pull of the moon. Geothermal energy comes from the center of the earth and nuclear energy comes from the nucleus of an atom. So these three types of energies, three resources of energy does not upon sun. Rest all of the energies that we have or see and use depends on the sun. For example, if shortly we'll discuss that hydroelectric city. Hydroelectric energy depends on water cycle. Water cycle depends on sun because when it, when it will rain, we'll store the water in the dam and that will use that in the later stage. Uh, wind energy is created due to convection currents. What are convection currents? Convection current is defined as the movement of hot and cold air particles. Hot air particles moves upward because it becomes less dense and cold air particles takes their place. Due to this movement of hot and cold air particles, we have convection current. This movement of hot and cold air particles is known as convection current. So it is dependent on sun. So wind is dependent on sun. Uh, wave energy depends on, uh, normally it depends on the uh, wind. So wave energy is also dependent indirectly on the sun solar energy is solar energy so it's completely depends on sun fossil fuels depends on sun uh the if, uh, food we eat would is dependent on sun biofuel depends on sun because uh everything that grows on this earth depends on sun and our even our growth is dependent on sun so all these factors are uh kept in mind uh that what energy resources are dependent on sun and which energy resources are not dependent on sun uh, adding to this point, another important topic comes that what factors to be kept in mind while using the energy resource. So continuing this with this, uh, section where which factors needs to be kept in mind while using an energy resource as the number one is reliability, that how reliable that source is, is it available or not? Availability. 
Reliability is mostly dependent on uh, how easy accessible that energy resource is. Uh, for example, if it is if we are using wind as an energy resource or wind turbine, whether it's a reliable source of energy, continuous source of energy or not. If we are using tidal energy or wave energy or solar energy, whether they are reliable energy. So, because sometimes if it's cloudy, sun will not be available. There will not be any wind available or wave energy. So, reliability comes under that. Availability is something, the magnitude of that energy resource, how much in abundance that energy resource is available. Because if we discuss about these energy resources that uh, tidal, wind and wave, when they are they are available in a, in, in a good magnitude. Uh, then we have uh, cost, scale, and environmental effect. If you focus this, the cost, scale, and environmental effect has a simple vocabulary that word, you, you'll get the idea what that means. If, if we're using hydroelectric as an energy resource, what issues that you can encounter here in the following month is you could see that fewer area is required. The advantage, first we'll discuss the advantages and then we'll go to the disadvantages. Uh, the problem is it's expensive to build. Few area of the world are only suitable for this. Flooding, flooding land and building dams could cause it. Uh, uh, flooding could be caused because we need to clear a larger area for uh, to apply this uh, to uh, create all this. Uh, on the contrary, uh, we have, uh, well, these are the problems that could be uh, there while using it for uh, uh, for that purpose. And then we have tidal energy. The With the tidal energy uh, is exactly the same as hydro power, uh, hydroelectric power station and it's expensive to build. Uh, only few areas are suitable for that. Flooding the land and building a dam causes environmental damages. When it comes to wind energy, when for wind energy and solar energy, the, the problems and advantages are approximately same because it, these are the purest, uh, cleanest form of energies. So first discuss that uh, the problems that we're going to have that a large area is required, very remote, it should be created very remotely. Wind sites are needed and winds are, we, as we discussed that reliability, winds are variable. Uh, the wind turbines are noisy and can spoil the landscape. We were discussing about the wave energy. When it comes to wave energy, it's difficult to build and a uh, few devices have been successful for using wave as an energy resource. When it comes to ge geothermal energy, the problem is deep drilling and is difficult and is expensive. So here we're discussing which factors. All these factors are keeping in mind while using them as an energy resource. So just keep this in your mind whenever a question comes that discussed advantages or disadvantages. I'll, I'll get to disadvantages but most disadvantages are very easy. Disadvantages are difficult to remember. So I'm, I'm just focusing on that. Uh, getting on to the next point, uh, geo, uh, solar energy, solar energy, variable amount of sun energy, uh, sunshine in some countries, solar cells are expensive and must be large to deliver useful amount of uh, solar power that a huge cell and huge area is required for them to be used as an energy resource and biofuels huge areas of plants are needed to grow plants for decomposition for creating digestion and everything getting on to the uh, uh usage and uh, importance uh usage of these energy resources 
tidal energy if we get discuss about the hydroelectric it's it's a clean form of energy tidal energy is a clean form of energy wind is a clean form of energy wave is a clean form of energy there is no <clears throat> environmental effects uh, sorry in there are in environmental effects but in terms there is no pollution created or there is no waste which we need to uh, worry about Geothermal is again a clean form of energy. Solar energy is a clean form of energy and biofuel are clean. So when it comes to the advantages of this, we could say that uh, zero environmental effect or no peel. Uh, environmental effects are there. So we'll not use the word environmental effect. We could say that no greenhouse gases, uh, no pollution and clean form of energy, the energy resource, the fuel is free. We could use all these terms in order to discuss the advantages of these sources of energy. So, so far, uh, let's review everything uh, right here, right now that we started with energy. Energy is defined as ability to do work. Energy is further divided into mechanical energy and electromagnetic energy. Mechanical energy was medium dependent. Electromagnetic energy was medium independent. Mechanical energy was further divided into kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy was the energy possessed by a body due to its motion and potential energy was an energy possessed by a body due to its position or height from the earth's surface. The formula for kinetic energy was 1 by 2 mv square and for potential energy it was mgh. The examples of mechanical energy you could say sound and for electromagnetic energy light because they are medium independent and medium dependent respectively. Then we divided potential energy further into uh, three types. That was chemical potential energy, elastic potential energy, and uh, gravitation potential energy. From the Earth's surface, the potential energy is, uh, when it's res with respect to the Earth's surface, it's GP, whose formula is MGH. Chemical potential energy is the energy stored due to the position of atoms. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored due to the compressed or stretched spring. After that, uh, we went to, uh, we moved on to the part energy store and energy transfer. Energy stores means there are certain energy sources which could be resources which could be stored and there are certain energies which can only be transferred. Uh, then uh, out of this was electrical energy, thermal energy, energy store was uh, last potential energy, uh, 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 kinetic energy, and uh, so forth and so on. Chemical potential energy, these were the energy stores. Then we went to, uh, there were only a few formulas up till here, this, that, like, these two formulas. And at times we use elastic potential energy formula, which is one by two kx square. Here k is a spring constant. You studied that in Hooke's law and x is the extension. After this, the energy stored in transfers, uh, we get to the next part where we discuss about uh, energy conservation. We discussed about energy conservation. That energy cannot be created, nor be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. From that, we discuss the formula 1 by 2 mv square equals to mgh. If work is uh, worked in against friction is present, then we'll add that into it. So input is equals to output plus waste energy we discussed about efficiency so uh let me know comment down below in the video that if you need anything uh, you want me to revise or focus on anything else we discussed about how what are renewable and non-renewable energy resources what factors to be kept in mind to be used it as an energy resource and we also discussed about how every energy resource is dependent on sun so the next topic that we're going to work on is work uh, work and power and combined to that I'll explain a few of the questions as well exams question as well so stay tuned uh, subscribe and like the video and uh, uh, push the bell icon so you'll get the notification whenever there's the next video that is uploaded thank you